set for the evening. We have B Gaming versus Horseman. What do you make of this? I think this is going to be a much closer series than we saw last game. That is for sure, Susie. Um, at the very least, I think we'll be seeing some uh, some trade-offs. Like, what I mean by trade-offs is sometimes we see one team uh, do really well on attack and then you know lose twice when they're on the right. defense and then go into the next map. They're good at attack there, something like that. I feel like uh, horsemen are really, really good on the attack. I, I like their style. I like how they're able to use the standard strategy, but sometimes they just kind of do their own thing mm -hmm. and uh, just kind of just try to fight their opponents, right? right? Because like team efficiency, they're really good at focus fire and they're really good at positioning their IS-3s they to protect are. their weaker tanks. They absolutely are. B Gaming, um, they, I mean, we kind of coined them as the sister team of the other Japanese team. Karen Tigers have been doing really, really well, but here's B Gaming. I mean, seven millimeter, again, these, the, these guys, Banzai Attack, seven millimeter, Lolite, uh, Jin, Taki, Super Hiroshi. These are guys we see time and time again. And actually, you know, it, minus paper, because we haven't really seen yeah. him all, but, uh, but, all uh, bleh, I can't even talk, all <laughs> that much. Yeah. Um, the rest of them really... They rotate take, a lot. Yeah, they do. They take time out to just make that best composition for what is needed. Yeah, besides paper and I guess gin to a certain extent, yeah. like pretty much everyone else participates. Um, Neat Mania made his debut last time we saw them and he did really, really well. Now we're going to take a look at Horsemen, who also do actually kind of trade their players out a lot. The only ones we haven't really seen are like Tommy and uh, Bloody Horse. Tommy did play last time. Um, Meat Bun, as cool as his ideas, doesn't always play either. I love Meat Bun. Standard ones though, we always see the Yoey Flash Wolf Brothers, <laughs> Gorilla, Nun, Just Rex. Um, we always see Peluso, almost never see him switched out. Right, um, and uh, same with Unicorn, yeah. we see him quite a bit as well. So, I mean, very, very solid team for Horsemen, um, as well as B Gaming. And these two, like I said, these are the two teams that gave EL Gaming a run for their money. The, um, EL Gaming had lost a few games to both of them, actually. Yep. Um, obviously, EL won the, yeah, the series, won. but... I mean, they, they still are able to put up quite a fight, and so I'm really interested to see how these two teams would fare against one another. Yeah, uh, and I, this is one of those matches we're really looking forward to. There's a few matches that, like, we haven't had yet that everyone is probably really excited for, like Run versus Coalition. Yeah. Like, that's one of those games that everyone wants to see. Uh, everyone wants to see, or, of course, this, I would like to see a rematch between B Gaming and Karen Tigers as well because that's so close. They're both from Japan. They're both really good. Um, these are the kind of matches that you, you think of and you go, I can't wait to watch this. It's not like when you see Elon game versus Team Vision, you're like, let's let's hope that Team Vision <laughs> doesn't get hurt too bad. You yeah. know, let's see if they can put up a fight. Those, these are these are the ones. These are the ones that everyone wants to see. So uh, our second map uh, is going to be Lakeville. So Steps is going to be the first map that we're starting with, and uh, that's going to be the lineup of maps for this uh, best. All of right. Eight. Well, we didn't really get to see Steps all that much last uh, the last series. Just one game. Just one game and a very short game at that, and so we weren't able to see. Um, you know how the how the teams decide to play out the strategy, except for that whole bash in and kill each other thing. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so B Gaming and Horsemen, I am wondering how they're going to play this out. I mean, they may take that reckless YOLO style again, too. We don't know, but it's entirely possible. Um, B Gaming does do that from time to time. I think this is going to be a bit of a slower start for this one, though, just to see these two teams kind of figure each other out. Of course. Stylistically, what they're how they're playing today. So game one, I think, will probably be the slowest one by far on steps. Lakeville is a really technical map we've seen as well. Uh, and just because these two are so evenly matched, I'm really excited to see how that's going to go. Because when we saw Lakeville previously, most of the time it ended up being one-sided matches where one team clearly had better prepared for the map. Mm -hmm. But these teams don't give me that feeling of a team that might just not know it that well since it's one of our newer maps in this league. Okay. Um, yeah, Horsemen right now kind of working out their roster. And uh, once they are ready, we will let you know. And Horseman is on the defense yes. for this first round. Um, what does that mean for them? So what does that mean? That means that they're probably going to want to set up around the railroad tracks on the west side of the map, get that T-37, which they'll most likely pick. We don't always see that. In fact, we see right. sometimes a 12-ton, which we saw last, uh, last game. In fact, our only game we saw on steps today. So we might see that as well. But one tank is going to be the spotter. The rest of the tanks are going to roam with lightweights together. We have even seen, like, occasionally, like, one IS-3 in there to try to help block for the fight. I don't think these two teams are going to be running that, but that's possible. Uh, but the defending side always going to form up near the railroad tracks. The attacking side forms up near the mountains to the northeast. And um, I guess if we have a little bit more time here, we might be able to take a, a closer look at the map, but I'm not quite sure how long it's going to take them to get ready. 
Um, but once we get into the game, I'll, I'll kind of explain again what the uh, the tankers are going to be wanting to do here. Yeah, the the chat is uh, pretty pretty busy right now, so I think they're going to um, sort out who's in. It's between Sidonia and Meat Bun. I think they're kind of deciding who's going to play on this map right now, and. I hope it's Meat Bun, because I like his name. <laughs> um, to be honest, I, I've been more impressed with Sidonia, uh, <laughs> like myself. I mean, just I'm not trying to even just play devil's advocate here. Um, but uh, Sidonia, also known as Tommy, he's Sidonia Tommy, which is kind of a strange name. Uh, but you can call him whichever. Sidonia, like, the thing that comes to mind first, because that's where his name starts. But Tommy, easier to say. Uh, but either <laughs> way, I, I like this play. We saw him play last time they played. It was his first time that uh, we ever saw him. And he looked really good. So... I kind of prefer him here, but uh, I think it's all going to come down to stylistically which one of these players feels more comfortable on this map. Looks good, and I think all the teams are just about ready. We're going to go into our first game on steps. Welcome to set one, everyone. B Gaming versus Horseman. Horseman is on the defense, and it is Meat Bun. Okay, so let's talk about these tanks, Susie. On the Horseman side, the defending side, 1T32, which you can use sometimes with these little bumps, these little tiny hills on this map. Let's go. Running six uh, T54s, like, sorry, five T54s and one 5916, the lightweight tier six that uh, is going to end up being the spotter. And then on the other side of things, we've got the lightweight LTTB comp, except instead of running two LTTBs, they're actually going to be running the Walker Bulldog gear, mm -hmm. which we have seen on this map quite a lot. Not to great success, but, you know, it, it's it's a smart move. It's an autoloader. Uh, it's going to be able yeah, to put that round. damage out. Yeah. Right. And, uh, I mean, I, I could see see why. It's, it's their way of being able to put out some damage, like you said. Um, a 10-round autoloader. There's like a 20-second, you know, reload time for him, so... Hopefully, this will be a good choice for B Gaming. Okay, so... As opposed to the 5916, I mean, if you look at that. Instead of what we normally see on this map, where is, uh, like, it's horsemen who would be the one that would form up around these railroad tracks over here, in this case, it's actually B Gaming that goes to this location first, which leads me to believe they wanted to take a quick fight because that's no one where you're going to run into your opponent. Right. And Horseman has kind of tricked them a little bit here because they were expecting um, them to do a more a normal thing, and so they were ready for a push to the right, top right. So I, I guess I should say B Gaming has kind of tricked them in a sense, but neither team really gets what they wanted here. They both went to the opposite sides that they expected. Right. And now it's... attack, um, I'm just going to point out that he's all the way up top. Um, this is a position that he likes quite a bit. I've, we've seen him take this little ledge here up yeah. by the railroad tracks to see if he can get a better view on on his team yeah and he gets spotted here but that's fine he's done his job he avoided the shot as well and he's just right on the edge of out of bounds here doesn't want to go over that line of course meanwhile another shot Ooh. taken at just rex just but it doesn't rex miss avoids it perfectly i mean the accuracy on these hits sometimes you see how far they are on the map Base capture is down to 79 seconds. There's only one tank in there right now, and yeah. everyone's just kind of super spread out. Seven millimeters just waiting it there, trying to force some tanks to move into uh, range so you can, uh, you know, just basically try to bait out shots and, um, and get these tanks into range of some of the other supporting tanks like Super Hiroshi. Um, they're actually not running a T32, so they're not able to use that kind of turtley position to try to poke at, at the tanks that move in. Spencer, meanwhile, rotating around here, actually going to maybe try to take some shots at that Walker Bulldog. Yeah, Walker Bulldog is pretty aware that he has been seen. Lelote is going to have to hide a bit. All right, so at this point in time, oh, look at that Ooh, ricochet there. Oh, wow. Well, at this point in time, the base capture is becoming more serious. Okay, well, they do, they do something <laughs> about it now. That 7 millimeter tank, uh, this LTTB, takes a ton of damage. In fact, now gets taken now out by Gorilla. He is dead, yes. Gorilla has been on his back quite a bit. Um, Peluso also right now is getting focus fire down from both sides. He's going to take a lot of damage, and he goes down as well. We are down to six tanks on each side. Yeah, a very tight game here right now. Be gaming with a slight hit point lead um, and still having their Walker Bulldog. Just reloading right now. It's actually a bit vulnerable. Spencer finds him. This is what he's been looking for. Can he get the shot? He decides not to. It's too risky. 
pulls away. He's going to try to get into a better position rather than you know blast out his shots and, and maybe miss and then end up getting caught. So very patient, very unlike what we normally see on this map. Well, very patient by horsemen right now, too. You can see that they're still holding their ground over on the east side of the map. They are using this ledge to their advantage. They're just going back and forth, you know, so that members of B Gaming can't really see them except for, you know, possibly their turrets. Yeah. And they're just holding, yeah, they're just staying there. They're, I, I know they're, they're defense, but man. Well, Jess Rex in a really good spot here. He's able to, uh, even if he had gotten hit there, it would have likely taken very little damage because it would have been on his turret. So I like the way he's playing this one. Members of Horsemen are taking damage. They're getting chipped down little by little. And yeah. there is two minutes and 35 seconds left on this game clock. So even though B Gaming is up quite significantly, they need to get this capture because with the positions that we have on this map, elimination in two minutes and 30 seconds is going to be nearly impossible, especially with lightweights that can spread, run away, and escape. So this is actually becoming quite tense for B Gaming right now. They need this base capture, and honestly, I might even want them to consider putting another tank in that capture zone to uh, to increase the pressure, and that's exactly what they do. Another tank moving in there right now. All right, the 59-16 is going to make his way over to the rest of his team. Uh, they realize it is down to two minutes now, and they're going to need all the firepower that they have. Um, this is good. This is going to force Horseman to actually take a bit of a more hard engage here. And 16 seconds left on that capture. Gorilla takes a shot from Taki as well. And, okay, capture gets reset, and this is starting to get really stressful because one minute and 45 seconds left to either capture or eliminate horsemen is going to be very difficult to do. All right, horsemen are just kind of moving all together. Look at that, look at that party. They want to see if they can focus fire onto one tank. I think Bonsai Attack was their target, but now it's just going to be a free for all. Shells are flying everywhere. Velveeta would be totally jealous right now. <laughs> well said, Susie. And uh, at this point, I just feel like, I feel like horsemen, they rushed into this. No, they and overextended themselves. They really didn't need here. to do this. No, they did not. And Archon is going to go down as well. He's going to try to do some damage, but nope. Neat Maniacs finishes it off, and none is now going to be the focus of all these target Oh, can he get one, can he get the ram off? It doesn't look like it. it looks like he's going to try to take one more shot, but Tamati blocks very perfectly there to save Bonsai. Now they're going to have to put three on capture instantly here to be able to get it in time. Um, or they're going to have to eliminate Jess Rex, who's in a decent spot here, but I think they no. have enough time to kill him. Look, Taki's been coming from behind. Taki's coming from behind. They should be able to kill are, him in time. There's four tanks at him. Look at all that crossfire. I feel like Horseman threw away a big advantage there, and there it is. B Gaming takes game number one. Uh, the advantage that they had was the time. They yeah. had the time and they had positioning, and instead of just kind of buying more time and, and delaying the capture just even slightly, they decided to rush in and take a huge fight. I and mean, the moment that the base capture timer started going down, it was too low. I feel like horsemen started panicking. And they're like, oh, gosh, we have to do something. Duh, let's bring our tanks in, you know? And, and that, that kind of level of flusteredness caused them to lose this game. Sure. Um, and, and that was a bit of a, a rough game there for horsemen. That's got to be a bit demoralizing just because... Uh, they did they, play it well. They had everything they had all the cards they were significantly ahead um they were down like 400 hit points but that's so insignificant compared yeah. to everything else they had going for them there they decided to group up and fight and they really didn't need to do that and um i think that if this doesn't mess with their heads too much they could definitely take game two they look like a, a solid defending team on this map they know what they're doing they know how to play this patiently and i'm expecting to to see them run the same composition of tanks again and just stick with the same sort of defensive strategy What's really interesting, though, is which side these tanks uh, approach and try to set up on. Because right. we saw both teams kind of expect their enemies to be at different locations and then had to react to that. Yeah. I wonder if they'll do the opposite this time huh. or if they'll stay. Because that's one of the funny things about this map, because you can basically send all of your tanks together to one spot or the other. There's not a whole lot of, let's split up or, like, let's move through. You know, it's, it's a big open map. There's no, like, okay, you guys go down that path, you guys go down right. that path. Right, of it's, course. Everyone's all together. Well, um, my bet is that um, they're going to do the same thing. Because this is a strategy by the defending side that we've seen several times now, where they go up towards the north... Northwest? East. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. The, the northeast. The defending side, yeah. yeah, the defending side. Northeast, by the base, and they, they just kind of fan out, and they use that little hill, 
and they just kind of camp there. And so I think uh, considering how well Horseman did last game with that, they may be able to do it again and perhaps play it out a little bit better. Yeah, maybe so. Um, we've definitely seen them, them do other things before, but this is how they're playing it so far today. Um, Karen Tiger really the only team that kind of switches up the sides on which they yeah. defend. So it uh, looks like the game is all but ready here, Susie. I think so. I think they are going to take the same tanks. Horsemen are going to have the same tanks. Um, and the other team is ready as well. We're going to go straight into game two. All right, same tanks, everybody, going into this game number two. No swaps, no changes. One T32, rest lightweights for horsemen with the filler 5916. LTTB M41 Bulldog with straight lightweights for B Gaming. Yep. Yep, B Gaming is up one. I mean, horsemen with their tank lineup up 200 HP, but like you said earlier, really insignificant. Yeah, it doesn't really matter uh, at this stage in the game. Okay, looks like Horseman, yeah, again, gonna see if they can spread out near that north eastern area. Yep, same sort of approach here, like you predicted. And the Walker Bulldog shells are now active. We are seeing them move with the LTTB, the big man in charge here, seven millimeter. Seems to possibly be the shot caller for this team. See him in every game, never seen him swapped out before. We do, he is in every single game. Look at that cluster of B gaming up by the railroad tracks. Gonna cause some trouble. And they are gonna, they know exactly where horsemen are now. They're like, oh, well they're not here. So they must be all spread out on the other side. And yeah. B gaming are gonna have to play this carefully as, as you said, there's not any buildings or anything to hide behind sure. out here. This is a, an insane spread, in fact, from Horsemen. It does leave them vulnerable in certain wow, points. Wow, yeah. So this is something that if the gaming can identify, which is insanely difficult to identify, if they can, they might be able to want to rush down two tanks at a time because the tanks are kind of split into groups of two, especially with the, the Lightweight and the T-32. If they could surround them and wipe those and then push forward towards the other capture point, that would be great. Obviously a bit risky. We have seen B-Gaming do this in the past. We've actually seen uh, Run do this a lot, which sometimes ends up being failure. Well, we saw how successful Run has been. <laughs> and I'm not sure if that's something they want to emulate. But uh, yeah, so Neat Mania up. He's like up on a hill. I'm not sure if that's a good position for him to be in. Well, it exposes him quite a it, bit. It does expose him a little bit, but he's able to get a little bit more vision this way. Um, I don't think he's gonna stay there for long. Although he is so far. Uh, we do see Gorilla moving around here, trying to figure out if uh, that Walker Bulldog is hiding in the bush again. Not able to see him though. Yeah, you can see him up there, he's just he's just able to, to fire down from this location, I guess. Right. Like he just did there, to try to hit um, Jess Rex on the underside. Maybe even hit Archon as well. See, yeah, he, he takes another shot there, he just barely misses. You can see that B Gaming is talking to one another. They want to focus fire and try to take down members one at a time. Seven millimeter takes some damage, and he's the only one in that base capture. It's going to take him a long time. I mean, 95 seconds without taking a hit is going to be quite a feat for him. Yeah. Another shot fired here from Bonsai. I mean, he's shot three things now, hasn't hit anyone, but... Make this, that four, Susie. Yeah, make that four. It makes it sound like he's trying to take shots and lure members of the horsemen to come in, but man, this spread. Okay, well, horsemen have finally decided to group up a bit more. They're, everyone's kind of on the north side. Big range, though. Look at all that space in between them. They Both these teams want to play it cautiously. Yep. Oh. Just refreshing those tanks for you guys. Um, now, uh, we see B Gaming form up here. And they're actually going to try to hit this T32. And I don't know if they're actually going to go hit it. I don't know if this is a good idea. This, this, this seems like a bit risky. They are somewhat safe behind this train, but now they're moving into a more vulnerable position. And Bonsai is like super vulnerable right Yogi now. He is making so much noise. He's like, guys, we're coming. Get ready. All right, they're going to do what I was talking about before. They try to rush down these small groups of tanks one by one, the ones that are out alone. 
like Just Rex in this case. Just Rex is going to be the first target. Oh, this is very risky, but it is it is smart. It's just risky. Let's see if they can actually make this work. Just Rex is able to figure this out. Does move off and takes a great shot. Bulldog gets Ooh, targeted down here. Lolita goes down, and Just Rex being that bait, pulling the rest of the team. B Gaming just kind of falls right into it, and then you can see the horsemen are all together, and they're going to try to focus fire each up. Super Hiroshi, su really, really down. Super down, actually, I was going to say. Yeah, and look at this nun in a perfect spot up here as well. He's just going to be able to fire oh, on until 7 saw millimeter. 7 millimeter. There oh, he goes. that was perfectly done. Sniped him from afar. And this game is essentially over. Susie, Neat Mania, in a big, big trouble here. Taki, the only support he's going to have, but they are getting taken out one Ooh. by one here, and that is going to be it. Horseman is going to tie it up going into game three. That's the way to do it. No haphazard craziness, just use the clock against your opponents, play defensively uh, if, you're, if you're not ready to, you know, if you're not, if you don't have to do anything like that, you shouldn't. And we saw in most cases on this map, if teams are deciding to uh, what I like to call a turtle, uh, and I use this reference because it's like something that we, we've used in gaming to describe someone who's very defensive, like a turtle, withdrawn into its shell. All right. Um, if one team is turtling, the attacking team is always going to struggle to, to attack into a position like that because you're basically running right into the jaws of the beast, right, right, right. if you will. Like they're, they're poised in, a, in an arc. They are spread out, and, and I know the idea is, okay, okay we could take out the T32, we can target him down, then we can get the next one, and suddenly we just overwhelm him. We take these 6v1 fights repeatedly, but if they see you coming and the T32 escapes, and suddenly you're out of position, nowhere to hide, nowhere to run, and you take way too much damage. And especially on this map, it's perfect. You know, no, like you said, nowhere to hide, nowhere to run. I guess you could run everywhere, but you're still exposed to everything. There's nothing basically. to run behind. There's no, there's no <laughs> safe pals. Yeah. If you go that deep, you are not getting away without taking some serious damage. All right, like you said, I mean, they are definitely going to be trading games here, as we saw now. Um, score is now 1 1. Horsemen, like I said, use the same strat, but were a little more patient. They, they got over that flusteredness and uh, they played it calming steady. So now we're going to see them on the uh, attack. On the, attacking on the attack, side. attack yep. yes. So we have uh, horsemen on the attack, riding in on horses, on tanks, tank horses. Um, and B Gaming are going to be on the defense. So I think they're going to change tanks now, obviously, uh, to modify what they need to do. Are you laughing at me? No. <laughs> no, I'm not. I, I was just thinking of like this old, old reference to something no one would ever understand. It just popped into my head based on what you said. And I'm not going to repeat it, but it just made me laugh. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm just thinking about horses a lot um, and horses trotting. and. Um, and then it just, that just made me laugh. Uh, okay. So Tamati is actually out here. And they're yes. going to replace him with... With Karaya. Karaya, okay. Yeah. So we're going to have Karaya in, Tamati's out, and tanks are swapped and switched. The game three is always the best game, Susie, because you get to see how the other teams pick their lineups. I, that's always my exciting moment. I'm like, okay, now you're on the defense, now you're on the attack. Are you guys doing the same thing as each other, or do you have your own style? That's when we really find out the differences in the styles. Right. Right. Because almost never do you see both teams take the exact same lineup for attack and defense. I think we have seen that Every before. now and then, yeah, but like have. very rarely. And usually on this map, actually. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, on this map, again, there's no real like leverage on who has the better side or, you know, like this is just like such a big open map that yeah. you really have to use every small rock and hill to your advantage. And um, I mean, I guess that's why they're pros, right? This is the first time uh, we've seen on this map, uh, or rather, this, I, I totally misphrased this. What I was saying is the first time we ever saw this map, first time we ever commentated World Tanks together Susie, on day one, we had both teams running the double LTTB compositions with all lightweights on this, and it was just a big crossfire. And so we, <laughs> we do every now and then um, see that both teams pick the exact same lineup, but I'm hoping we see some changes here, some variations, because I like to see how teams are, are deciding they want to play things. Okay, um, I think... Horsemen are going to add a 5916. Looks that way. That's what it looks like. I'm just uh, giving you guys the inside scoop because I can read their conversations. Yeah, checking, checking it out early. <laughs> Give them some spoilers, spoiler alert. My bad, spoiler alert. But uh, no more spoilers because we're going to go into game three and you guys can see it for yourself. Game three, we are tied at 1-1, one, one, and B Gaming now on the defense. Yep. All right, tank time. 
T32, uh, straight lightweights. One of them's grayed out, so ooh, I hope that's not a disconnect or something uh, for Karaya. Okay, he's in now. And uh, T5916, and on the other side of things, six lightweights in the 5916 on horsemen. So they really are riding in on ooh, horses, man. Yeah, they really are riding in. That is a lot of lightweights. Okay, already quite a bit of a spread here for B Gaming as they figure out how they want to approach. Meanwhile, for horsemen, um, riding together to the west side. That sounds very cowboy-esque. Yeah, this is like the wild west over there for it the horsemen. Sure is. I mean, look at look at the terrain, man. It is the wild, wild west. Yeah, and uh, shot fired here for seven millimeter. Does not connect. And it looks like they're just gonna form up here. It's like warning shots almost. It doesn't seem they're really aim. I mean, it looks like they're trying to aim for for the 5916. Yeah, now they definitely are. But before, it might have been a blind shot just simply to see if there's yep. anything there in a, in a common position. They hit him, which is great. I mean, the 5916s are the only uh, only guns out here that are the auto loaders. Yep. So by trying to We've eliminate now, that, that's going to help out the team. Whew, and there he goes. Yep. Saying at least it didn't explode, and then boom, it exploded. Sorry about that, voice actor guy. You ended up being wrong in the end. Now, uh, at this point, that puts them up a, a whole tank here, which is huge. And this allows Spencer to actually be that extra factor here. And he's somewhat expendable, but now he's even more so expendable because it's like, oh, the worst case scenario if I die, which will, is very unlikely if I die, then at least we're like at the exact same position here in this Right, game. and he's gonna go straight forward, maybe even sit in this base capture. Oh, and takes a lot of damage by Karaya, actually. Kariah, actually. One health oh, left. man, that One was... One health. <laughs> don't run into that rock too <laughs> hard, Spencer. Don't be careful, dude. Actually, Spencer, you might want to just get out of that tank, man. You want to just go home. It's over, dude. He just needs to abandon that tank. The crew members are like, let me out, let me out. <laughs> yeah. Let's keep a close eye on Spencer here. He's got five shells, but one HP. So I know, well, okay. So so from the objective of the horse, um, not the horseman, from B Gaming is that they want to get rid of him, right? Yeah. And so as long as they, as long as horsemen know that B Gaming are going to be shooting at him, the rest of the team at least will have a good view of the attacking tanks. Yeah. All right, Spencer's oh, Spencer. actually going to start the base capture. This is some of the riskiest choice ever. <laughs> Spencer is like uh, awesome powers and enemies. Like, I, like to, I also like to dangerously. <laughs> um, All right. He might end up finding himself with a bad hand here, though, it, with uh, how low his health is. Well, like you said, though, I mean, this is just like he's got nothing else to live for right now, right? Like, he's going to be out there. If he dies, then then it's an even playing ground. Yeah. Because then it becomes a 6v6. Alrighty. Well, that base capture does continue as they're unable to connect the shot on him. I can't believe that. Spencer is just kind of there. But they're the not moment, prioritizing right, him right now. The moment that 7mm comes out, there's going to be other members of Horseman who are just ready to flank him down, you know? Yeah. Because he's not a huge priority because he's a, a non-issue in the game, essentially, at this point. Right. Until they start fighting each other in more close quarters, whereas when that auto loader is going to shine like you were talking about. I don't know if he can shine with one HP, however. Right. So, like, you know, if he can actually do damage without being fired upon, that's that's good. So it is important that he's alive here. But uh, B Gaming, not very concerned about this guy at this point yeah. in time. But they will be as his base capture gets lower and lower. So. All right. A lot of the members of B Gaming now are going to just head up north and see if he can, they can start taking out tanks all the way by the railroad tracks instead. I mean, there's 27 seconds left on on capture, though. Yeah, and remember what you said, Susie. Uh, if, if he pokes his head out, he's a bit vulnerable. They actually don't see that C32 tank over there. Could actually take him out. Some million could take that shot. They're going to need to take a shot on him soon with 16, 15 seconds left here. And Spencer is just chilling. OK, there he goes. Finally, 7 millimeter connects and kills him. And Horseman massively ahead in hit points here, though. It's going to take a solid fight. Much better position. That T32 from behind trying to snipe some of these wow, hit points down. But none from that high ground. Just shooting down. Banzai attack getting focus fired down. He's going to die very quickly. And Taki being the last. Oh, no, he's not the last guy left. 7mm is lurking around somewhere as well. Well, he's, but the, he's the T32 that's in the middle of nowhere, and now he's just going to 
hope that he could somehow burst these tanks down from afar. Or he can run around for two minutes and 15 seconds and hope that he don't capture the base. Yeah, that's, that's I mean, that's literally basically what he's going to try to do here, slowly run away as he tries to, to take some of these tanks out. But it shouldn't, shouldn't happen. Theoretically here, he should be taken out very soon. He's yeah. just going to be surrounded and killed. And it looks like Horseman is going to take game three, putting them up with a 2-1 lead. You know, when you see one tank sitting there like that, trying, you know, when there's like five guys coming at you, it kind of reminds, especially on steps, it reminds me of like one of those uh, jungle documentaries that you watch that where there's like a poor prey animal that's like in the middle and uh, like the rest of the pack come and like devour him. Yeah, that's. that's I was going to say, I'm like, when you said those jungle documentaries you watch, I'm like, I mean, you, you mean like people in general, right? Because I don't watch those jungle documentaries. <laughs> okay, the ones that I watch, <laughs> the, the documentaries that I watch about the animal kingdom. Uh, With a great voiceover, and, and now the T-32 is being surrounded by the lightweights. That's exactly it's what it is. It's a juicy meal the, the lightweights haven't eaten in days. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually exactly <laughs> the, uh, that's what's going through my mind. As, as you're talking about it, I'm like, I'm like, the T-32 seems to be all alone out in the middle of the wild. You know, like that, that's A what I'm thinking. A feeble attempt to retreat. <laughs> but anyway. It's already over. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that was very well executed by, by Horseman. Truly, like horses. Now I'm thinking of horses, like surrounding a, like, a gazelle, even though horses don't eat gazelle. Okay, anyway. Sorry, guys. It's horses, a long yeah, horses don't eat any gazelles, but that would be crazy if they did. But sometimes you do see people mounted on horses, usually called the horsemen. They do chase down their prey. They do. And that's what we saw there. So horsemen taking a 2-1 lead here, going to our final game on steps. I don't yep. think we'll see any more tank swaps or any player switches here. I don't think so either. I think we'll go with exactly the same, same lineup, same everything. Um, steps, and then the next map is Lakeville, and yes. I'm really excited about that one. But before that, we're going to go back to the Wild Wild West. The Wild the plains, Wild West. The as, plains of the steppes. As soon as we see uh, those players ready up, uh, there is some semblance that there is some humanity nearby with the railroad tracks. You know, there's, there's the idea <laughs> that uh, somewhere nearby there are some people, or maybe there were some people. It'd be really interesting if like a train passed through the map occasionally. That'd be really cool. It actually. could like run hey, over the tanks. <laughs> hey, hey Wargaming, you should like put that in there where the like on a timer yeah. and if the tank is on top they get hit by the train as well. So it's like an added factor to it. Call some block tank shots. <laughs> Alright, well, here we go guys. Set four on steps. Set four, here we go. Horseman up two, be gaming one, and the tank list shows that... Uh, same tanks. We're going to go exactly the same. The, both teams have the 59-16s, and the only difference is that T-32 over on the, on uh, B gaming side. Yep, that's exactly right, Susie. So let's see how they decide to approach the attack here. B gaming spreading already. Horsemen, on the other hand, sticking together, only leaving the 5916 for the spotting. They're going to be moving towards those tracks. Yet again, seems to be what they're favoring here, going beneath this little bump, this little hill, will lead to hiding in the bush. Shh, no one can Sorry, see Sorry, I said him. that really loud. I don't want, I don't want no them to know he's there. No one can see them. Horsemen well, can hear you, man. The back of the tank is the equivalent of like the, the guy hiding in the curtain, but you can see his feet. <laughs> It's all right, he's far enough away that they can't see him. Oh, oh no, nope, they see, see him. him. Wow, that is a three tank focus fire. Can't believe he stayed there. He Dude. was like, maybe they shot me by accident. <laughs> maybe they don't see me. <laughs> My feet are totally not showing right now, guys. I'm thinking of an ostrich now where his head's like hidden, yeah. but the rest of his body's out. Me and my animal references today. Okay. Now uh, I learned a lot about you. You watch a lot of National Geographic. <laughs> That's fine. Animal Planet. Great channel. All right. Well, we're in the same situation one more time. We've got Spencer. It's a 6v7, essentially. Yeah. Well, let's see uh, Let's see how they play it off because we had the same situation last game. And, um, you know, it, it, it does make a, a large difference, but... Uh, not always the, the, the game winning move, it's just a of slight course. edge, right? right. So okay, none moving well. over here with Gorilla, the two Yoli Plackle buddies are oh, a bit caught out here. Gosh. Basically the entire team B gaming just decides to go up north and 
See if they can eliminate their opponents quickly. A quick rotation down by Horseman, though. They're getting ready to fight this. Yep. And we all know how Horseman does when they take big fights. None also supporting from behind. They don't spot him. He can do some extra damage. Wow, Super Hiroshi taking a ton of damage. This would be a good time for them to focus fire him down. Karaya also taking some hits. Meat Bun could be the one. He's your man. Meat Bun, don't get caught out. Him. He was out of position there. He was just way too surrounded by the members of B Gaming. And now it is a 4v4 fight. Archon. And this is so close. It's a 3v4 now, but Spencer is down to 198. Never mind, zero. Zero. Three tanks to three tanks here, Susie. Neat Mania taking some good shots here on Faluso, but just Rex. Can we come help him maybe with the Ram here? Ooh, he was not able to get in the position no. in time. Is not oh, looking he good. still can't take out Neat Mania. That's what he needs to do. Archon needs to get the Ram. Yes, and okay. he gets it. Bonsai attack now is left. The two of them. Oh, they this focus is so fire close. On them, they may be able to get it. This is so close. They're both using the, all these tank shells in this tank graveyard here, Susie. In this battle, Just Rex gets oh, very low. Oh, Just Rex takes a really bad hit down to 99 HP. It looks like B Gaming has essentially done it. They've essentially oh. won this round. Archon gets taken out by that T32. And Just well Rex. Well done. Just Rex, ah, he ended up leaving his buddy just for a little bit. Buddy dies. Just Rex also bites the dust. Tie score, Susie. Anyone could still take a win here going into Lakeville. Two to two. Yep. And a very exciting, fiery finish there in that last game. And like you said, they are definitely trading games. You could see that not one team is super good on defense or attack or anything like that. This Just, is what we expected to yeah. see. This is the best time of match in World of Tanks where it's back and forth. We're seeing multiple strategies. We're seeing different tank compositions, stylistic choices from these teams, different ways of approaching, different ways of fighting. Um, I'm liking it. I'm really liking it. That yeah. was a, a fight that was forced based on those two tanks being out of position. Those two lightweights were out of position. And uh, B Gaming basically took a chance, and they, they went for that fight. They were able to surround and, and, and take that battle. And they got it. They, they sure got it. Um, I mean, just Rex kind of leaving Archon there to, to hang to dry was, was a little bad, I think. Even with such low HP, I think he could have still added some cover. Yeah, and Faluso also uh, that, uh, that weaker that weakened tank, so he actually was struggling to get in position. They were kind of bumping into each other. I think some maybe miscommunication happening there. Possibly. About how they wanted to fire there. Um, because the reload timings were like opposites for them, so they could have easily protected each other while they were in reload, but they just didn't. Um, it was a very quick battle. This is the kind of thing that is easy uh, as us, the observers, you know, the, viewer, the, the people who are actually watching this happen and not, and not actually controlling these tanks to say these things. Um, but I feel like he definitely could have made that fight happen a little bit better for him there. I think so too. Now, the next map we're going into is Lakeville. And uh, Lakeville, gosh, it's such a gorgeous map. It really is. Take, take a look at this. Um, the, the, the beautiful thing about this map to me, Susie, and this is going to sound a bit strange, is I love that it's kind of on fire. Uh, <laughs> it looks like some 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 serious stuff has occurred here uh, in this in the city, um, or what's left of the city, that is to say. No people in this battleground. So obviously there's some strategic points we're going to be talking about here on the map, the mini map is uh, shown to you guys because. I'd love to talk about the common strategies that we see on this map and uh, how the defending side likes to handle We'll get there in a second. Let's just enjoy how pretty this map is. I love that cathedral right in the middle. It offers a lot of protection. You know, you see, um, oh, they took it away. But you see how the tanks usually like to um, hide behind those houses. Now, here's your aerial view of the map. Let's talk about this. So the defending side spawns to the south. And usually, what we see them do is try to get a better position to the city. So they actually approach the attacking team and we see them kind of form up in the middle of the city. That's what we were seeing last week from these, uh, from these teams on this map. Occasionally, you see the defending side send some uh, some of their members to the pass, which is, let's, let's just like put these terms out. The left side is the valley. The path that's in the middle that's to the left of the lake is the pass. And of course, the city is on the right side. Sometimes you see people form up on that pass, hide behind some rocks, hide behind some trees there, try to take shots through the city. 
This does leave you in a bit of a weaker position, though, if the attacking team is able to take control of that capture point at the bottom right, because if you take control of that location, you have a really easily defensible position, and you're on top of the capture point. So, really good place to be if you can work that out. Right, um, and just so that you guys know, from the past, and what we call Lakeside is going to be by the city, but next to the lake. Um, that is perfectly in range, where the two tanks can definitely see each other and they can definitely fire over that lake, but there's less cover. So you kind of have to be careful. There's, it's a long range, but... Uh, yeah, we've seen, uh, we've seen Bonsai attack in this location. We've seen Icy Flying Unicorn yes. uh, there as well. So these, these members like to go over there with their... Usually it's a lightweight tank that's sent over there, uh, T-37, and they just hide, try to take those shots. They can easily reposition because you have to send a lightweight tank there, not because a lightweight is the best tank to have at that location, but because it's far away and they can get there the fastest. All right, well, let's see how these teams play on this map. Lakeville, game number one is on now. Okay, B Gaming versus Horseman, set five. Score is even 2-2, two, two, and we have B Gaming on the defense first. Well, Susie, this is one of those games where we see the exact same time lineup for both teams. Both of them using that controversial AMX 5100. You hate that. You I don't, hate that tank on I don't, this map. I don't hate it, but it's definitely sometimes the winner or the loser of the, uh, the team comps. So it's a very risky pick in my opinion, but... Uh, they're just rolling with the, I, the IS-3s to protect that AMX-5100, and because this is essentially at the highest level of play, in my opinion, again, based on what we've seen, and I think the best teams are doing this, is you just kind of disregard the lake and the mountain and the valley and all that stuff. You're just like, okay, this is actually a really, this is like a mini Himmelsdorf that we're gonna fight in. So that's why we see these heavy tanks. That's why we see these IS-3s. And the, the battling in the city is essentially the most important part. Oh, I just realized that a Bloody Horse is in this game. This yeah, yeah, actually, he sneaked in without telling us. Oh, hello, Bloody Horse. First appearance, he's on that 5100. Let's see if he can make it happen. All right, already the both teams decide they're going to go into the city and see what they can do here. Uh, Neat Max take, took a lot of damage, as did Super Hiroshi. They're both down half HP. Yeah. Um, those lightweights, again, going to be able to try to go around. We see actually right now Peluso is approaching that uh, mountain pass. I think he might try to take some shots across the lake. It's actually staying just to the north for now, though. Yeah, if he can make it out there, though. At this point, a very, very significant lead for Horseman hit point-wise because of the damage on Neat Mania and Hiroshi that you mentioned before. And B Gaming being on the defensive side here, they have time on their side in this bit of a stalemate we've run into here, as neither team can really approach easily at this point. Yeah, so yeah, Nun and Archon both using the Cathedral as cover. Um, this map is interesting because you would think it's it's uh, big and open, you know, because it's, it's a lake. Yeah. But this little town here provides great cover and a lot of these little pathways that kind, you know, that, allows for sneaky moves and flanking, and it's really interesting to see how these teams decide to play it out. In my opinion, I feel this map is best played as a city map, but there, are, but that's the cool thing about it is you can do things like this. You can send your lightweights around the map and try to threaten capture points. We're gonna see them try to, they, usually this uh, position is protected by the, the tier six tank, but in this case, it's actually um, the tier six tank that took some damage. So if they actually sneak through here, and get on top of that point, they can actually kill. I think they would be able to take down Neat Max. Neat Max is gonna. He's, he's very low. He's actually looking the other way. I don't think he realizes that these two tanks are gonna come at him from behind. This and by the really time cool he strat. turns around, oh, he, he's he turning. Hears he, them. he hears them for sure. But right. it's only him versus two. I don't think he assumes that there's two. He's actually being fired on from the city as well. Oh, Peluso gets gosh, a great shot there. Yeah. Nate Max down to 181, one more hit, and he's done. He's and now gone. now the capture will begin. Two tanks on that point, and this becomes very awkward because they do have a good position to aim on that side. They've completely outmaneuvered the uh, the opponent's team. And look at this, as soon as, as soon as B Gaming starts to react and start heading towards that point, that's when the horsemen in the city start to spring to action and start to take these fights, knowing their opponents are out of position Perfectly by this capture. done. Nun and Gorilla are after Super Hiroshi. 7mm takes a ton of damage as well. This is beautiful play right here. This is 
This is a Lakeville strat. This is amazing, what you're seeing right now. This, and wow, Gorilla is going to go out and, yep, take a seven millimeter from the other road. This is perfect usage of the road. Like you said, they were sitting there just waiting for that base capture timer to start. And they got to spring into action like that. Brilliant play, brilliant play. Five seconds to go on the base capture. No tanks in position no, to deny. No, there's no one they're out even, there. They're not even like, like trying to take this seriously. They've already won the game. Countdown is over, and Horseman is going to take game number three and take that 3-2 lead. Honestly, that was my favorite game we've seen this season. That was so well done. That was so that was sneaky um, to be able to take. I like the fact that they brought two over into the valley and not just one. Because usually we'll see one tank come around to the valley side and try to sneak it in. But no, they did that. They took out Neat Maniacs. They knew Neat Mania took the early damage. They were able to identify that he was the one who was spotting and protecting for this. Then, as right before, right before those two tanks showed themselves, they fired at Neat Mania, drawing his attention then back to the city. He was very overwhelmed. He was being attacked basically from three tanks from three sides. They get on the capture point. Not one tank, but two, which forces the reaction because moving through that city with IS-3 is going to take you a long time to yes. get the position to defend this. And as soon as they started moving, that's when the tanks jumped out of their hiding spots in the city, outnumbered, but in better positions. And they were able to take so much damage off on those tanks that even if they had lost that fight, it would have taken the tanks so long to get over to that capture point to deny this. I'm just in awe of the, this there was Yeah, there was nothing that they could do. There was really nothing except maybe try to take out members in the city and then come around, but like, even Be then, that was just not enough time for that. Best decision making, best play, like, number one play up. I was like making a top five plays this season. This would be number one currently. <laughs> this was pretty, Sick. pretty well done. Really, really yeah. awesome. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, Horsemen can, uh, you know, continue to show us some pretty awesome plays like that on this map. This is not something you could do every time. This is not a standard strategy, which is what makes it even cooler. It's just kind of like, all right, why don't you guys just go around and kill that guy? We'll jump out of the bushes in, in the city and, and finish them <laughs> off while they're distracted. If the, you know, I, I would be really amazed if they could pull that off again. I don't think they will, but if a similar situation occurs, I'd like to see them do like a really cool strat because they're clearly masters of the map. That was awesome. That was like super, super cool. Yeah. Um, and we actually saw Horsemen struggle on this map uh, before. Oh, that's fact, right. The first time they played on this, they really lost on it. It was versus Karen Tigers, I believe. And they had a very close series with them until this map, in which Karen Tigers dismantled them two games in a row. So. Right. Well, it looks like they've definitely learned from their mistakes there. They've learned this map quite well. I wouldn't be surprised if they picked it. Yeah, a very high chance of that. Um, especially because B Gaming has already shown their proficiency on mines, for example. So that might have been the maps that were left, and they were like, no, 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 no mines. Let's no mines for us, no. All right, well, we will take a look and ha see how the next game unfolds. Set number six, Horseman to three. B Gaming at two, and B Gaming again on the defense. And we can see that the tank list is exactly the same. Straight up, one to one, nothing changed, despite, uh, despite that uh, total domination there by Horseman in the first game on the That map. was so well done. I would love to see that again. Go for it, Horseman, let's do it. All right, so we're gonna see a bit of a different plan here, actually. And you know what? Your dreams might come true, Susie. Yeah, You're seeing two lightweight <laughs> tanks coming, at least poising to maybe go towards that mountain uh, valley. Yep. It's a bit early to, to say for sure. And yeah, it definitely looks like it's it's definitely kind of one of their backup plans. Uh, yeah. They're always ready to do that, but it's not like the original starting the plan. The gaming is definitely ready. Look at that. They've already sent out one of the lightweights to go and at least, you know, take a look and make sure they can't get get backdoored again. Yeah, backdoor is a, like a, a good uh, metaphor, a good you know, reference to, of course, other games, um, but essentially the same idea here, right? Um, and the T-54 yeah. is coming over, so. Spencer is gonna take that valley way um, and see if he can get some visibility out there, maybe call over his friend. Oh, well, he's actually going through the mountain oh. pass. So, this is really cool. Okay. Now Spencer is here. Neat Mania might be reacting because he doesn't know if it's one or two tanks that's actually headed his way, so he has to go and kind of visually spot this. Mm -hmm. And Spencer's just doing a really good job of hiding behind this rock. He hasn't been seen just yet. Yep. Neat Mania is uh, 
his his feeler tentacles are, are <laughs> out there though. Oop, yep, and he takes a shot on Spencer. Mm -hmm. Spencer starts to get a bit low. Such a back and forth series. Now with a, a slight really, lead really with, this, with the strategy though, it becomes <laughs> a lot weaker because Spencer needs to be alive for this to actually work. Neat Man is trying to make some noise over there, trying to lure out Spencer, it seems. Yeah, Spencer's not moving, he's not going anywhere. Not until he has any backup. And it looks like instead of bringing back up, they're gonna send that uh, T-54 back home. Yeah. Uh, that being Feluso, of course, like last game. And it looks like they're gonna try to push the city. Wow. I do worry for Horsemen at this point because their strategy has essentially been shut down. It's yep. eaten about a minute and 10 seconds of their clock. And they're not able to make any headway in Lakeville itself over here. All right, Feluso is now lakeside and he's gonna to try to see if you can lure some people out, look, it's like, no, I don't want to say friendly fire, but he just seems to be shooting at nothing at this point. Right, well, Make this, some noise. He's, he's, uh, he's, tr he's trying to actually get an angle on some of these IS-3s. Just basically saying, okay, instead of just trying to force my way through these, this courtyard, I'm going to attack from the lake side like you were talking about, uh, from a different angle to try to disrupt them. But B-Gaming was too well positioned, so he wasn't able to get anything done. Even though his blind shots were, they look silly because we could see everything. It made sense, you know, yeah. the idea. Now, Archon is just going to run in here. Ooh. This is not going to go the way well, planned until he gets support. Super Hiroshi coming out like that because he was trying to shoot him also made him an easy target, and he goes down very quickly. Just Rex and Nun, they have a good shot on Karaya. They're gonna pull back just a little bit, Ooh. make sure that they don't die, but... They hit Taki, and that's what they really want. Oh. It, it may have actually just been a, a lucky miss. Oh, now Feluso's here too. I mean, they, they really want to focus down on Karaya, and they do, Karaya taking in a lot of damage. Taki... Taki is the the, key, the primary target here, but he he's so well protected. He only has three shells, though. Yeah, he's so well protected by Karaya. Karaya doing exactly what you want to do here. Seven millimeter gets taken out, and suddenly Horseman takes a massive lead in this game, even just by forcing fights. Oh, we're seeing the 59-16 battle over here. This is like Ooh. this is the side story that doesn't matter as much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it looks like. Lolita does win that fight, but it's not going to matter if the rest of his support tanks go down here. That was like the so... Brand Stark storyline. Yeah, ex very, very well <laughs> said. I was like, yeah, I mean, we're kind of curious about that, but not uh, really. it's not the big picture right now. All oh, right, so Neat Mania is over on the pass. Neat Mania on the pass. Yeah, Feluso here is uh, is just going to push his way over. And if he can actually take out that 5916, he'll be able to easily start forcing that T54 in the uh, in the past to, to get taken out. Well, actually, oh. he gets taken out already. He gets taken out already, and Lelote is in trouble. He knows that there's a guy coming at him. Trouble is headed his way. Feluso is going to just, whoa, stylistically <laughs> jump over that little cliff and take him out. That looks like the the, the little jumps that you do when you're riding <laughs> horses. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I mean, this is horseman, right? Like, looks like he just he did the little jump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he will jump with a, with a tank on top of the horse. I just want someone to make a, a, a like a picture of like horse mode with like a bunch of lightweight tanks on top of horses. <laughs> like the tanks are riding horses down. That's like the most perfect Photoshop <laughs> opportunity right there. Someone do it. Someone tweet it at me. I will be so happy. <laughs> that is okay. Oh gosh. All right. So now horsemen really showing us that they are prepared for for this map. Yeah, looking really really good. And uh, I don't know, it, it's one win away at this point. Yep. We're switching sides though. So that's a, that's a key thing to note because it may just be simply that, uh, that the horsemen are really good on the attack on this map and they're not as strong on the defense, which I think is actually the case that we saw when we did see them fail on this map, Lakeville. They didn't actually get to switch sides because they lost twice on the defense. This could be their weak point. This could be uh, at this point a chance to come back mm -hmm. uh, for B Gaming. We'll have to see if they can pull it off. Also, I'm really curious to see if we're going to see any tank swaps because both teams are running the exact same list, so I don't think we'll see any swaps. I don't think we will either. I think they'll keep the same. Um, from what I see, yeah, horsemen are keeping the same list as of right now. Um, yeah. And B Gaming is doing a player swap. Meat Boy or Meat Bun out and replaced with Nipa. Nipa, that's right. Oh no, Karaya's out too. Oh yeah, we'll see what he gets replaced uh, Karaya with. Karaya is out and and Bonsai. Um, I believe. He wasn't in that last game, was he? I'm pretty I sure know. he wasn't. I guess they will let us know, or we'll, yeah. we'll see it on the tank list. Because um, Alita's still in. 
there's still going to be a, um, a little bit of a change there, yep. but everything on Horseman's side is going to stay the same. So this is, uh, this is an opportunity for them to, uh, to try to use a different player to maybe get a different result, if you will. Um, yeah. I wouldn't say that this is like the fault at all of V Gaming. Like they are playing well. They're not making any strategic mistakes. They're not making any glaring accuracy mistakes. It's just simply that Horseman is playing so much better. They are playing really, really well. Uh, they showed us they were, they were playing better last week. And I'm really happy to see that they are consistently playing at this top caliber. They seem to have intimate knowledge of dealing with IS-3s. We saw them approach a location where they had no vision around a corner and they were outnumbered and still took the better trades with those IS-3s. They know the, um, the reload time insanely well, so they know if a shot is missed, they have this opportunity to bring right. uh, even one of their lightweights in. As we saw, they brought the lightweight back and, and start to add that extra fire and try to eventually get that tank chunked down to nothing. So scary to fight them in the I city. Mean, it's it's kind of it's interesting. Like you said, the, the reload, it's 11 seconds for the IS-3. And to know exactly when a, a, a shot is fired, and then knowing how long it's going to take you to get there, shoot him, and come back, that's really, I mean, that, that, this is why they're professionals no, and we are not. No doubt, like, when you're <laughs> learning this, you can just, like, fire once. You know, if you're a newer tank player, when well, you see the fire, you look at the clock, and then you know 11 seconds later, you know, say it was like the clock was at uh, some, some to such 44 seconds. You know right. when it hits 33, he's going to have another shot. Um, but at this point, I feel like these players just know by memory, know so by too. sound, like how long they've played this game, how much they've played this game. They've got it in their heads. They're top, top level players that we're looking at here. And this is the Gold League. This is some of the best players of in the course. world and the best definitely players in, in Asia. Asia. Yeah. So, all right, here we go. We are going to switch sides and get on to this next game on Lakeville. Set seven, everyone. Horsemen up four games. B Gaming's two, and Horsemen are now on the defense. Let's look at this tank list. Some tanks change here. We have here. IS-3s. Just two on the side of B Gaming, whereas they're running a full lightweight list, and they're on the attack. I think they're going to try to attack through the mountain pass, or rather through the valley. Yeah. I think they're actually going to take that approach. Otherwise, why would they bring this many lightweight tanks? Yep, that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to go for the mountain, the, through the mountain valley. And they're going to use their IS-3s to position and make it look like they're in the city and make it look like this is a normal game. But in reality, they are using their lightweights to rush around. This is something that if the horsemen press tab, they can see the lightweights and they're probably thinking, oh, this could be something really different. We do need to take this seriously. But let's see how B Gaming can uh, either find success or totally fail with this strategy because this is a very aggressive strategy. This is. I would almost call this cheesy, what they're doing here, but let's see how well it pans out. All right, well, the 5916 taking a bit of damage already. He is by the lakeside and uh, trying to get good visibility for the rest of the team while the two T-54s are just going straight down to the valley. They're going to see if they can um, plant themselves there, be a little bit safe. They don't want to obviously go straight for the base capture yet. Yep. While the rest of the team is... Uh, Actually, it looks like the rest of the team is following suit. Yeah, well, they're just trying to take some of these IS-3s out across the lake. The thing is, sending an IS-3 through that mountain valley takes, like, so long. Uh, I'll right, see you next week when yeah. they get there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, They'll get there when we're time for our cast on Monday. Yeah, they'll be they'll be there around the same time we start our cast on Monday. Uh, it's going to be at 9 p.m. plus 8 <laughs> UTC, so see you there. Uh, they are right. starting that capture now. And, yeah, um, Neat Max is going to come around and join them. Base capture is at 40 seconds. Ooh, I like this plan. I'm starting Ooh. to understand. I'm starting to understand. Okay, right now they're going to try to catch these tanks over the lake with the IS-3s they brought into this, this, this mountain pass. It's going to be insanely hard to take out an IS-3 that's in that position. Just simply because it's so tough and it's it's going to have behind some of these rocks. And it'll be so far away. And now base capture, there's three tanks out that way. Feluso is the only one who's going to try to see if he can... Oh, man, but look at that. He's getting focused by two on two sides. All right. Horseman in a tough spot here to try to get into position. Yep. And they those... are ahead in hit points, but not position-wise. Oh gosh, Nipa takes out Feluso, and now that 5916 is the only tank on that side. He's kind of stuck in the middle there. This is the type of strategy oh, that I feel like can only work once. 
And we'll see if it works here. 35 seconds. Wow, now there's this crossfire over the lake, that IS-3 firing party. Yep. Taki's in a very good position. Spencer gives some good visibility around that area, but I mean, I don't know if he's going to be able to do any damage. He can't do damage. The IS-3s are not in their natural habitat. Okay, they're out in the in the open here, and um, we're seeing them slowly try to push forward here. You know, I'm wondering where Bloody Horse is. He's got four shells left, and he really needs to do some damage. Base is going to be captured very quickly. I mean, we're he's, looking at five seconds now. He's trying to get in there. Okay, there's the delay that they needed. Spencer can eat that damage. That's okay. He's not the, the key tank here, but like you're saying, Bloody Horse needs to get in there ASAP and do something about this. Spencer trying to get into like some cute little spot over here. I mean, he's got that auto loader. He can do some damage. Well, oh, he's just no. trying to delay this. You know, obviously he doesn't want this pace to be captured. He's just buying time for the rest of his team to get out there and see if they could do something. But two of those IS3s go down. Two remain. Bloody horse. Bloody horse, where are you, dude? You're way too far, he's and the base is going to be captured in like seven seconds. He's not able to get any shots off. He misses a lot he here. He has missed quite a bit, and now base capture is going to happen. It completes. And B Gaming is going to take this game. We're going to game eight. This will be the final game before we go to a potential tiebreaker on Ghost Town. Now. I do not think we're going to see those tanks again. I think they're going to switch tanks right away. That was a, a gimmick strat, a cheese strat, right? This is like a, I hope we can get all these tanks through. We're sending these tanks through the, the, <laughs> the mountain valley, all of them, like doing a, a, you know, an aggressive rush push to this location, throwing them off, tricking them a little bit. I really doubt we're going to see them do that again because if they do, it'd be so easy for... Um, for B Gaming to just, or rather for Horsemen to just press tab and go, oh, lightweights again, okay. Okay, and I see just, what they're gonna do. And, and then just go, go and the stop valley. them, right? Yeah. So well. it's, it's too predictable to do twice, I feel. If they do it again and they make it work twice, I will eat my words, but I just really don't see that happening again, Susie. Unless that is the entire strategy, right? Where they're like, I'm gonna psych them out and pretend like we're not gonna do this, but we are gonna do this. Thing is, if you see lightweights and they don't do it, you're like, well, why did you bring lightweights to the city? You're going to get wrecked. Um, it's it's like so clear that if they see the lightweights by pressing tab, you know, they're going to be like... They're probably going to the valley. Yeah. yeah, so this is something that we're going to have to... I think we're going to have to see them change back to the IS-3 comp and try to push the city. It's scary, though, because if they mess it up, if they lose in any way, if they do this, try the strategy again and they get directly countered, they lose all the horsemen, it's over, and horsemen wins 5-3. They need to force that tiebreaker. That's their best opportunity to get points here. I wonder if uh, they're going to replace Bloody Horse. Yeah, that's a good that's a good question because he uh, he was he was only out on this map and he did not show up to that last game at all. Um, no. Said AMX fifty one hundred not always doing the damage that it needs to do. And we've seen this a lot <laughs> on this map. You really don't like that I, tank on this map. I like it for the city, but when it had, ends up having to do anything else but just sit there and do damage in the city then it, uh, it just, I don't know. I'd almost rather see anything else in most cases, even another IS-3. Uh, I, know, I know there's people on the internet watching me like, I don't know, Wolf, you gotta get that damage. I'm like, not if you can't hit anything, not, not if you get you, focused down. Yes, that, that is the key. You need to be able to connect those shells if you're actually gonna use that AMX-5100, so. If, uh, you're, if you're gonna be a tank that just eats damage, and doesn't hit anything, it doesn't deal it, you at least want to be the type of tank that absorbs more damage <laughs> so that you're more relevant, that's like an true. IS-3. That is, that is very true. Yeah, you're right. So, I mean, that's, uh, I'm obviously speaking, like, very, uh, I'm, like, trying to take, I'm, like, trying to simple, oversimplify this, yeah. right? Um, because an AMX-5100, if it does get its shots off, really good. The question is, like, do you want to just even do something a little bit safer? It's about, it's about the potential damage versus actual damage. Is, there's a, quite a disparity uh, and a lot of the time. Fair enough. Uh, it looks like horsemen are going to keep exactly the same lineup. So we're just waiting on B Gaming. And when they start the battle, we go into game eight. Th like we said, this is the closest matchup of the evening. Yep. And uh, it could go to a tie break. Could absolutely happen, Susie. You it might see could. Ghost Town again. But oh. uh, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, as, I'm not sure uh, if I want to see Ghost Town, but... I'm, I'm down with seeing Ghost Town. Yeah. I'm down with the tiebreaker. I'm cool with it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm like very okay with this, actually, if it happens. There's only <laughs> one game. So uh, we'll have to wait and see how that one plans out. But looks like the game's ready. All right. Set eight. Here we go.
All right, set eight. Horsemen are up four games. If they win this, guys, then this is it. They get the three points. All right, so they didn't do the strat. I told you, Susie, but you know what? I'm worried because they got two Amex 5100s <laughs> this time. But that does give you twice the potential to get that damage done. Ooh, Neat Mania actually is on a 5100 this time instead. Um, All right, they're going city-wise. Oh, and Horseman is expecting them to perhaps go for the base capture to the west. Again, they're actually forming up to go to that location, which is exactly not where B Gaming is going. If they give up this position, if B Gaming is able to take control of the south part of the city, that is going to put them in a massive advantage. And we've seen this already on this map. The very first time we saw this map, we saw this exact same, same thing happen. Horsemen formed up defensively, uh, and it was the Horsemen actually that, that made this mistake. They formed up defensively on the southwest, and their opponents just took control of the city and then were able to defend uh, the, the capture that they were going for. So, uh, let's see we'll how this one pans out. We'll have to see how it pans out. Like you said, um, I don't think they're as bad as they were the last time well, they did they're this. Much, you know. they're, they're doing it much care, more carefully right, this time. Right, they're a lot more careful, and it looks like they are definitely positioning themselves a little bit better so they can see a, a broader view. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about Spencer going up the valley, but you know what? He is. It is justified in that they were attacked there before. You know, of course, it is uh, good for him to scout out and take a look. Okay, right. B Gaming taking some shots already, but now, uh, no one's lost HP. Oh, Gorilla's taking a little bit, but took some damage. But yeah. um, this is really interesting. Bonsai takes another shot through the. Uh, that little ridge but doesn't hit anybody. With four IS-3s here on both sides, there are obviously tanks that you can prioritize in the fight. The AMX 5100s are easily going to be the most important target to burst down. The 5916s as well, definitely if you can see it and you can shoot it, you definitely want to take that shot. Yes, you definitely do. Spencer is coming around the pass now. He's like thoroughly looked all around the mountain and he's like, yup, there's no one here, guys. And so I'm going to start shooting as well. And he's going to definitely aim at Lolite. There you go. 7mm takes a kill on that IS-3. In fact, it wasn't even Taki who finished him. Taki did get those shots off, though, which is, again, so important when you're running these AMX 5100 pops. Uh, Lolite is making a ton of noise over here. Yep. He's Bloody a menace horse. to society. <laughs> Bloody horse <laughs> takes some damage. Yeah, he's like wrecking the building, he's destroying that wall that somebody spent like hours and hours making. I know, man. Oh, uh -oh man, gorilla. gorilla. But he's the bait. Oh, shoot, Nipa takes so much damage. Look at him. He's not going to be tanking for anybody right now. No, gorilla. he's not. Gorilla is there, but it's a, it's a fight of IS-3s. Remember, there's an 11 second uh, reload time. In oh, bloody oh. horse hits his shot too, and that's a hard shot to make. Now Faluso even getting involved here. He's got three rounds left. Gorilla is able to Gorilla escape death on top of this, mind you. Oh, wow. That was very, very well done. But he's going to get hit from behind. And he's taken out. Now, Nipa, I mean, Nipa is down to 86 HP, but he's still doing damage because That's he's not the dead. Key. That's the key. Um, but, you know, this is actually really close. I feel like Horseman has a slight advantage in this game if they can actually hit just a few more shots. Like, they can clean this up. Oh, right. Okay, Bloody Horse goes ahead and takes out Lilote. And lives. Eats a, a shot ricochets off of his back there. No, it's just a trading of trading of blows here blows, essentially. Blows, man. They need to get none behind. I was about to say that's the worst positioning I've ever seen. Uh, now he's not only behind but in a bush <coughs> for extra uh, safety, extra um, defense here. The question is, where is Peluso? Uh, okay, he's all the way at the back. He still only has those three rounds, but he wants to save them. They are precious, like the last three drops of water <laughs> in a canteen when you're in the desert. That's how precious those are right now. Get going! Get going! That's what they shouldn't be doing right now, no, actually. actually they like, should I'm like, <laughs> listen, voiceover guy, you have made two mistakes today. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, it didn't blow up. It blows Luckily, up right after. Luckily, <laughs> jeez. All right, so, bloody horse. In, uh, All right, one of the one of the 
it, what was it, Taki is headed up north, actually. Yeah, it's like he wants to surprise with that burst damage. How much, he has actually all of his rounds. By the time he gets around there with an AMX 5100, he's gonna have, uh, <laughs> He's going to have all his rounds back, but... I know, he could probably just keep shooting right I now. Think I think he's going to try to find Feluso. I think that's what he's looking for Maybe, right now. Maybe, and he'll probably take the pass, to be honest with you. Now, Archon and Just Rex, they're placed right behind this ledge. This is very smart, it's very safe. And everything's just at a, at a standstill. Taki, I think, is going to try for Bloody Horse, to be honest. Well, it would be nice for him to finish him off. Two shots missed here for Taki. It's very far away, very hard to actually, I mean, the AMX is 100 at, at this distance is not very accurate, so. Right. Um, Come on, Bloody Horse. Bloody Horse is in a great spot, except if he gets spotted by that 5100. He, he, he actually takes it, some shots yeah. on the 5100, though. He, he could damage Taki. It. And that's exactly what he does, and they yes. go for him. This is a huge risk by Taki to go down this pass, because he's so exposed, and now he can't do anything. He's pinned down. Okay, they're going to take this opportunity while everyone's focused on Taki, but Archon. Archon. Takes a lot of damage. Okay, Taki does take out Bloody Horse. That was a great ruse over there. And uh, one by one, the horsemen fall. Feluso is the last man standing. But not for long as he is done a very, seconds. very long cooldown. Yep. With that reload time, he's not going to be able to do anything. But, you know, we are down to one minute left, Susie. If they actually chase him, he might be able to time out the clog. Ooh, this is really close. They need to get multiple people on the capture. They now do. he has to hit the capture or else he's going to lose it. Can he hit it? I don't think I so. I don't think he will be. 28 seconds, man. Either way, B Gaming wins this. And we are going into a tiebreaker. Yeah, we are. So we're going to be seeing Ghost Town after all. Oh, Let's see if Feluso can make his one shot here. He's basically got two chances will. before the time runs out. Oh, neat man. Oh, he's just suiciding oh, here because he knows yeah, it's over. Yeah, he knows it's over. All right, well, there you have it. We're going to a tiebreaker, Susie. Ooh, he's like, you're coming down with me, though, buddy. Taki yeah. takes a lot of damage. Taki does. But it doesn't matter if Peluso can't hit the base capture tanks. Can Peluso? he do it? Whoa! Can he take a shot? No. Nope. Doesn't happen. That was really close, though. <laughs> that was pretty crazy. That was pretty nuts. B Gaming B -Gaming takes the win. B Gaming takes that win. We go into a tiebreaker. It is 4-4, and we are back on Ghost Town. Yep, so Ghost Town is uh, going to be the final map. We don't yet have info on who is the home team uh, for this map. Well, information wasn't given to us. I'm sure we're going to find out in just a second who will be on the attack and who will be on the defense. We're going to find out in just a moment because that's really important going into this map to see who we're going to see. Meanwhile, let's take a look at this map itself. Ghost Town. Now, these two teams haven't played on Ghost Town. That was in the first series yes. that we saw this. But again, Ghost Town... Um, I personally really like this. It's like Lakeville without the lake and a little more ruin. In so, a way. Yeah. So I just got the update that B Gaming is home team here. And knowing their style, I would expect they would like to defend on this map. Despite the fact that the T32 strategy is really strong on attacking, this is a best of one right. of these points. So I would expect they would pick the defense because they're good at being defensive. For the enforcement's more aggressive. You don't think they'll take that that uh, capture point there in the middle? So the see, you guys can see here, capture part one and two. Speaking of two, uh, the one right smack in the middle, you don't think they'll go for that one? Horsemen would, right? I think a horseman might do that if they're on the attacking side. If horseman gets a defensive position, I feel like they're very well equipped to rush down the T32 position. So I, I think either way, we might not see that strategy. We might see the middle, uh, the rush mid type strategy. I call it rush mid because you're basically Everyone's going into the middle. Right, right, Try right. to take position there as quickly as possible. Those are the two main strategies. So as soon as we find out who the, the tanks are, or who's going to be the attacker, the point of the uh, then we'll know what sort of strategies we might see here um, based on the teams. Because at this point, without that information, we're kind of just guessing at this point. Absolutely. I, I do understand what you mean. Horsemen, though, I mean, I have a feeling they'll go aggressive. You think so? Yeah. Um, I, Just a I, hunch. Yeah. All right. B Gaming is picking defense. Okay. okay. This is what I expected. Yeah, so horsemen on the attack. I think they're going to be pretty aggressive on this. Yep. So for horsemen, I think the plan, the better plan, knowing their play style and knowing how good they are at it, I think is to rush the middle capture point, okay. not to try to take the T32 one. Um, but at the same time, B Gaming's defensive style does not really 
fare well against that T32 type of push because they like to, they, they're not the type of team to rush the T32 position, which is how we've seen that, that style countered most of the time in the past. So, oh God, I'm actually kind of getting really excited about what, <laughs> what these teams are going to do because it really could be what completely one do? thing or yeah, something yeah, yeah. completely different. There's two main paths. We're about to, to go down. And we're I'm about pretty to go sure Horsemen and B Gaming are also thinking the same thing. Going, yeah. gosh, what are they going to do? What yeah. are they going to do? Yeah, this is this is pretty cool. Uh, I'm starting to get pretty excited about this. So uh, once these tanks are chosen, I'll be able to give you guys more info on that. Already seeing two Amex to 100s on B Gaming. Karaya is going to be in, and uh, they're going to take 7mm out. Yeah. Which is interesting because Sal Miller. He's always been in every game. He's literally always been in every game, and he usually is on the AMX 5100. And running two AMX 5100s without him, maybe it's because of his performance on Lake Bill on the AMX 5100, where they were like, "We were not hitting the shots you needed to." I don't know, man. But seven millimeter. I mean, he's like the go-to guy. Seems to be the shot caller, even. Maybe. Yeah. So I'm thinking, unless he wants to just be on the outside, look at it on the hole, and be able to shot call without actually having to play. That's true. That's it's absolutely possible. So, 7mm out, and in comes, find out, uh, Nipa? Karaya. No, Karaya, okay, yeah. yeah, you already said that, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm, like, so excited about the strategies that, like, I'm, my brain is working fully on. <laughs> I don't care about these little things like the player swaps. I want to know what tanks they're using and where they're going. What are they, are they doing? Where are they going? Okay. So, uh, as soon as we get into this, we'll be able to tell you guys. Um, all I could see for a Horseman right now is they are running two IS-3s, which you do either way you're going to play it. So um, we still don't know if it's going to be the 222 T32 t or the 222 aggressive push. Um, God, there's so many different possibilities, Susie. There's so many possibilities. I'm thinking right now, too, like, but if they go aggressive and they know they're going to go aggressive, will they just psych them out and go defensive? Or yeah. Like, no, I, I, totally, I totally see what you mean. So, uh, like, like I said, like, they're known to be aggressive, so then does... B gaming play to that, knowing the horseman may do that, or you know. So meta. It's just so meta uh, right now. I can't think. Like we're going anymore. down. You're, go, you're going down to like the lowest level. You've like you've like <laughs> gone so deep that like you you are now analyzing like should we not do this even though we're better at it because they expect it level. Like that's where we're at right now. Um, this is a best of one. There's only one game, one shot, one chance. There's yep. no there's no second chances here. You're, and, and the winner isn't even going to get the three points. You better at least get two points. At least With how two competitive points. this league is Seriously. right now. And where these two teams are, these are not the teams that are like at the bottom where it's like, oh, well, they've got a lot of work to do in general. These teams are fighting with the top teams, and every point matters. So losing the fact that they're not even going to get three points, period, is pretty rough. And just to get even uh, just one is like not acceptable. Considering how hard this series was for both teams, just trading games back and forth, yeah, they need to come out with two points. One of these, they, they, they have to want this two points badly. No doubt. Well, we've got all five observers, all 14 players. Everyone's in. I think uh, just final touches are being made, and then we'll start the game very shortly. Um, yep. Yeah. Should be soon, Susie. And, uh, are you excited? This I is, am. Uh, I'm like, game I, nines the are tension always, is mounting. Yeah, the game nines are always so exciting because... They've worked so hard to get here. It's also so rare that we see tiebreakers. We've only seen two so far. This is our third mm -hmm. tiebreaker ever, and that's that's with uh, now three weeks of matches. That you know, this is the last match of uh, week three that we're in here. So it's like down to the line, under the wire uh, at this point in time. And okay, they are both ready now. The game is going to start. Oh, are you ready, Susie? Wait, 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 wait. They just said wait. <laughs> My ready has to wait. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm wait readying. Yeah. I'm just going to wait for, um, Lolita said no, they're not ready yet. So it's, a uh, B gaming that needs a little bit more time and, uh, we will be ready in just oh, a moment. Lolita oh, Lolita forgot to change his tank. So at least we know that maybe, oh, I don't know. What could Lolita possibly be playing? What, what do you think is going to be the, uh, the filler tank, the, the non-tier 8. Um, I don't know. It looks like the game's ready, though, so I guess we're going to find out, Susie. Okay, great. I don't have well, enough time exciting. to think about it. All right, great. Okay, here we go. Game 9, everyone. We're on Ghost Town. We are down to the wire. B Gaming versus Horseman. 
B Gaming opting to be on defense. This is game nine. Here's our tank list. Here we go. All right, let me get into this really quick because I don't want to miss a second of this action. Two AMX 5100s for B Gaming, three IS-3s, the RU-251 and the T-37 on Horseman, the attacking side, running only one AMX 5100, three IS-3s, two lightweights and an AMX 12 ton, no T-32s. They may be att attempting to rush the center. Ooh, that does seem that way. That and uh, we also have an IS-5. Sorry, I misspoke earlier when I was saying three IS-3s. It's an IS-5, actually, which we have seen uh, some players experiment with other IS tanks, other uh, you know big, heavy tanks that have a lot of hit points. We saw the IS-3 prototype the other day yeah, yeah, as yeah. well uh, on this map. So we do see sometimes the players do switch out the IS-3 types they're, they're going for. So just a really technical tank lineup for both teams here. Okay. I um, it looks like we have some yes. lag though. Sorry, I'm like getting really into Sorry. this. I know we're both so focused. Apologize for that. Uh, B Gaming, uh, one of the players lost connection. It looked like it was, it was Karaya. Karaya yeah. yeah, he wasn't able to uh, get into the game. So we're just going to get back into that screen and, and hope again. that, yeah, hope that he is able to connect. My apologies. Now you guys know what it looked like when I'm commentating. <laughs> we're both like this, yeah. like staring at the screen. Yeah. So, uh, Sorry about that, but um, it looks like we're going to get everybody back in there. Karaya was the swap out, you know, the swap in, I should say. So maybe right. his latency hadn't been tested yet. So we're going to give him another chance to get in the game and try this once more. Yeah, he was the one who was on the, um, the RU-251 yes. and uh, was a bit late to join there, it looked like. So as soon as we find out if everything's ready, we go back into this one. Well, yeah. at least now we have stuff to talk about. We have the tank lineups are, they're like live. We've seen them. We know yes. them. And we're not going to be seeing the T-32 strategy. We're going to see... It looks like possibly a, an aggressive rush strategy. Um, and this is a bit unfortunate for B Gaming uh, because, or rather uh, for, I would say all, to a certain extent, even Horsemen, because now this, since they're the attacking team, they're the ones who make the first move. With B Gaming having to restart like this, this gives them a, uh, B Gaming a lot more time to actually think about what to do. Um, so now Horsemen are probably like, oh no, we have to think of a different strategy. They yeah. already know what we're going to do. This I actually tanks. don't think they can change tanks now I, because no, they already announced them. I think it's them. just going to be a rematch. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's got to be a bit frustrating for them. They're probably like, hurry up, this can't happen. <laughs> I don't want them to think about what we're doing. They've already seen our tanks. They know what we're going to do. They know our strategy. I don't want them to have any more time to think about what we might be doing. I know. Um, I, I see that in the chat. They're like, is it okay? Can we start now? Yeah. But, um, so, uh, let's see. you know, hopefully no more issues with the lag, though, because that's always really unfortunate and can mess with your head a little bit. It uh, does. It on, does. And I'm sure it kind of psychs them out because they started the game they probably were like moving and then it stopped. And so back to back to tension time. Back to square one. Um, so just waiting here for just a moment. We might actually have one of our observers finally get back in there. All right, everyone is in, we're ready to go. As okay. soon as everybody readies up, yeah. we could start the battle. Well, okay, so everyone on horsemen are okay. Um, they're just trying to make sure that everyone on BG is okay now, too. It looks like everything is fine. I hope so. Lolita. I hope so. Oh, my God. Susie. Lolita spells his name with an I and not an L. I just read it in the chat. No. It is. It's a capital I. We've been wrong. Eote. The it's whole time. It's been wrong time. the whole time. Oh, no. My life has been changed. Ah. <laughs> It's okay, we'll still call him the Lord. The, the, it, could be his, it could be his uh, attention from the, from the beginning to do this as well. Okay, here we go. Everyone's ready now. We are back on Ghost Town. Let the games begin. Okay, guys, one more time. Set nine, tiebreaker. Here is our tank list. It is exactly the same as before. And like you said, yeah, that IS, uh, IS-5 kind of snuck in there. Yeah, they definitely did. Stylistic choice for the map, no doubt. And uh, time to roll out. let's see. It is time to roll out, gentlemen. Here we go. IS-5 leading the charge. The tankiest tank, that slow tank up there, looks much slower than the IS-3s, but uh, significantly more um, tankiness, if you will, more armor, and also even 50 more hit points. <laughs> so. Here we go, they are actually rushing uh, towards the middle, but fanning out rather than aggressively 
um, just going all together through the south. Yeah, everyone's really spread out. It, this is a very different strategy than we've seen so far. Shots have been fired. I feel like this, the, the idea here is definitely uh, for both teams to play safer than you normally would because it's the best of one. Already two tanks on that center capture point though. Lolita takes some damage. He's just gonna cause a lot of sound on the way around here. Ooh, Bloody Horse is in such a good position to stop anybody who comes in. And also you can just jump on that capture point as it starts to get low and drop it down to like nine seconds and finish it. Beluso, meanwhile. Beluso on the run. He's going to see if he could join the rest of his team back into the center of the map. Ooh, bloody horse. He's now, just notice, sitting there and waiting. Yeah, notice that uh, Karaya is on the uh, RU-251. Base capture in eight seconds. This is, a, this is a tense one. I don't think they'll get it. But maybe I'm wrong here. It's no one's been touched yet. This is crazy, actually. You're in yeah, such a good position, are... but there's okay, the damage. Here we go. There sac is... sacrifices a bit of his own health to make sure that doesn't happen. Right, now he Spencer goes down. Spencer is down. Bonsai attack takes a lot of damage, and now all they have in the middle of that base capture is a little building where they can try to hide. Taki in such a good position to do damage here. He just consistently has shelled every single one of them. Look at that. Five shots, five hits. 1,200 damage nearly already Oh, but it's okay. Archon's right behind him, and he's going to try to clean him up before he could do any more damage. Well, that's, he did exactly what he did. The question is, can they hold on to this cat point? It doesn't look like it, Susie. Super Roshi oh, takes the just kill. Oh, Just Rex is also going to get wrecked. Just wrecked. Just wrecked. Super Hiroshi's going to come around. Faluso, though, ready with a shot. Misses it. Takes some damage himself. Gosh, it is a 3v3. Super Hiroshi is down pretty low. 67 HP left. Bolita Zero HP well. left. Not a big fighter here on the T37. He is going to try to uh, come around here with Nipa to finish off Archon, oh, and they do. Oh, now it is a 2v2. This is such a close game. Oh, man, Nipa, the last one left. It's an IS-3 outgunned here, a 254 and an IS-3 against him. But he is on the defensive side. Oh! oh! Now, now, okay, he just needs to run away and eventually, uh, the thing is he can't really run away versus a lightweight, can you? No, but you know what, it's an IS-3 versus a lightweight. Oh, wow, but he's going to just run circles can around him. Can he take him. one more shot? Can he take one more shot before? No, Faluso takes him out here and that will give Horsemen the victory. Securing them that final two <laughs> points. What the closest series we've ever seen. I was gonna say, I don't think there's been a series anywhere close. Like when you come down to the wire and it's still like 1v1 and they're both so down low. That was that was a fantastic series. Congratulations you know, to Horsemen. You know Horsemen oh, right man. now are in screwing Yeah, and high fiving right now in the house. Like, <laughs> mm, we did it. We got those points. Two points. Yep. And two points well earned. Man, that was quite the series. B Gaming walks away with just one point today, not what they wanted, but at least, uh, well, I don't really feel like there's anything good to come out of it. They were leading uh, this series for a little bit in the a beginning, little and then bit. Horseman was able to take it away from them, and they, all they could have hoped for was this, and they didn't get the two points they wanted. All right, well, we got notification, guys, that TCSG um, has been disqualified. They, for personal reasons, couldn't show up tonight, and so Karen Tigers will take that win. Karen Tigers with another three very easy three points. Yep. Uh, they're just getting up there now, aren't they? Here are the results for tonight. We have EL Gaming taking down Team Efficiency 5-0. B Gaming versus Horseman in an immensely close shootout. 4-5. Yep. to five. And unfortunately, TCSG with a disqualification and an easy, easy win. Three points for Karen Tigers. Yeah, so I think we're going to take a look maybe at our final rankings. For, uh, for where we're at after this. Just to give you guys a bigger picture of where these teams are point-wise right now. Um, this is such a cl uh, close second series though. The first one was obviously very one-sided, but this makes up for it. Um, you know, even in that first series, EO Gaming only had one game where they were down on Ghost Town. They yeah. still had to turn around. They were down like 1,500 hit points, and they still brought it back. So that was uh, super rad from them. And it's been a really great day of tanks, even though we don't get to see that third one. Um, pretty awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see what the matchup is for next Monday. Here is the next matchup. Horseman versus Team Efficiency. Ooh, after seeing how Horseman were today, Team Efficiency's got a lot of practice ahead of them. 
Yep, then Karen Tiger vs. EO Gaming can uh, what many consider to be the second best team in Asia challenge the best team who's been so far pretty unchallenged and then can run take a single win off of Immortals. That is the question. That's going to be on next Monday, my birthday, Susie. Ooh, well, hopefully we'll have some great games for your birthday. Maybe Run will actually win a game for you. I hope so. <laughs> that would be a great birthday But present. we will be back on Monday, June 22nd at 8 p.m. That's UTC plus 8. Yes. And uh, right here, same channel. And uh, yeah. So, amazing day of tanks today. And really close games at the end there. That was amazing. The last game especially was just fireworks. What a way to end the evening. So, we are totally thanking you for joining us here. And uh, my name is Susie Kim. This is Wolf Schroeder. And we will be back with you next Monday night.